In 2018, the Washington Post published Amber Heard's article in which she would describe how she survived domestic violence without directly mentioning her ex-husband Johnny Depp's name but it was clearly implied that it was him. Fast forward to today and we're 19 days into the defamation trial. Closing arguments will be made this Thursday and the final verdict is expected to be announced sometime after May 27th. With Johnny suing for $50 million for damages, claiming that he was never physically violent with her, and Amber countersuing for $100 million, claiming that she had only ever been violent with him in self-defense. Amber Heard, or as people have coined her Amber Turd, has been taking majority of the heat with many being on the side of Johnny Depp. However, I have the thought process that there are two sides to a story, and I feel like there's more attention being focused on Amber than Johnny based on what people have seen from the trial. And with such a toxic relationship, I don't believe that Johnny is 100% innocent. And before you come from my head, Johnny Depp fans, I want to come from the point of having an unbiased view. So most of my research and input won't be based on information coming from the trial. So just watch to the end of the video and you can vent in the comments if that makes you feel better. It's easy to see why people love and cherish Johnny Depp. He's an amazing actor that's been in a lot of really good movies. From 1986 to 2006, he's been featured in 32 movies including Edward Scissorhands, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Alice Through the Looking Glass, and of course, with his most well-known role as Captain Jack Sparrow in Disney's The Pirate of the Caribbean, in which he's taken a lot of pride into being the character, as well as making a pretty good amount of money from the success of the five films, totaling to $4.5 billion in box office revenue. Since Johnny Depp's relevancy in the last decade or so as an actor, he's clearly shown true talent, charisma, and uniqueness that people clearly enjoy watching. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing? What are you doing? Mm. Captain gives orders on the ship. The captain of the ship has given orders. My ship makes me captain. They be my charts. That makes you sharp man. Self included as a 90s baby. However, what we wouldn't know about is his traumatic past and how it would eventually impact his professional and personal life. Johnny Depp grew up in an unstable home throughout most of his childhood, first living in Kentucky, then Florida, and then moving more than 40 times after that with his family. His father was mainly absent, in which he was mostly raised by his mother that often physically and verbally abused him. In a Rolling Stone interview, Johnny would say, Yeah, there were irrational beatings. Maybe it's an ashtray coming your way. Maybe you're gonna get clunked with the phone. It was a ghost house, no one talked. I don't think there ever was a way I thought about people, especially women, other than I can fix them. At her funeral in 2016, he'd say, my mom was maybe the meanest human being I have ever met in my life. Johnny would then take up smoking at 12 years old, then move on to drugs and alcohol as a way to cope. Three years later, he suffered through his parents' divorce, dropping out of school soon after. As you can see, that's a lot to happen to a kid before he even turns 16 years old. Ever since he was young, he played the guitar and had dreams of becoming a famous rock star. In his 20s, he was a failed musician working odd jobs like telemarketing pens and selling t-shirts, eventually succeeding as an actor with personal introductions offered by his friend Nicolas Cage, and the rest is history from there. However, his relationship with smoking, alcohol, and drug abuse would continue into his adult life and acting career. Even though Johnny was now rich, famous, and dating beautiful women at the time in the 1980s, he drank heavily to ease various kinds of pain, describing that doing recreational drugs was not a cause, saying, it was never about recreation, not ever. That was never my motivation, not once. Johnny would drink more and become more volatile because of it. He often got into fights, was occasionally suicidal, and sometimes would cut his arm with a knife, saying that when he got into fights, he was a dirty fighter, the dirtiest there ever was. He would stop at nothing, it doesn't matter. Balls, sucker punch, bite the ear, pull the ear, gouge an eye out. I have done damage and damage has been done to me. Going on to emphasize how much of a temper he had at the time. I still have a hellish temper. I mean, it's diminished a little, but rage is still never very far away. It seems as though that rage would soon be shown to the public. In September 1994, he reportedly got into a loud and violent fight with ex-girlfriend Kate Moss in a presidential suite at New York's Mark Hotel. Next door neighbor to the room complained to management, leading to a forced eviction and the press swarming for answers with Johnny claiming that he was trying to kill a cockroach? 
I was just trying to catch this bug and a couple of articles of furniture just happened to get in the way. Because when I want to get rid of bugs and cockroaches, I, you know, I get very violent and angry too. That was kind of a nasty, darker period for me. I can't say I was completely unhappy, but I couldn't get a grasp on it, so I spent years poisoning myself. There's been many times when I've teetered on the brink of absolute madness, and it does take some serious fucking reeling in to bring me back to three-dimensional reality, but it's not anywhere near as disturbing as it used to be. With age, you do mellow in certain areas, and it's fucking happiness. To his point, it did seem as though Johnny Depp mellowed down over the years without much press reporting on anger or violence related incidents. However, there seemed to be whispers in Hollywood about Johnny's drinking problem. On set for one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, specifically Dead Men Tell No Tells, it's alleged that he was constantly late to set and drank excessively while the movie was in production. His lateness reportedly led to hundreds of extras waiting for hours for him to show up, causing the movie's producer and the Disney production chief to work together to figure out how to shoot around him. It was also revealed that he relied on earpieces feeding him lines during filming, some of these instances allegedly being related to his drinking problem. Not to mention, he's openly admitted that he spent more than $30,000 a month on wine. It would then be in 2016 when a video was leaked to TMZ showing Johnny angrily smashing cabinets and drinking wine, while Amber Heard recorded the scene. Sorry. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. No, that's the thing. You want to see crazy? I'll give you a fucking crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Have you drunk this whole thing this morning? Oh, you got this guy. You got this going. That same year, they settled their divorce in August, filing a joint statement that partially read, our relationship was intensely passionate and at times volatile, but always bound by love. Neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. There was never any intent of physical or emotional harm. Then in 2018, Amber Heard's article would be published, with Johnny finding himself depressed, isolated, and essentially to the point of being blackballed from his industry. Even with Johnny Depp's impressive portfolio of films that have been watched and enjoyed by millions, the fact of the matter still stands. People need to learn how to separate the character from the actor. We can enjoy an actor's work, but the realistic truth is that they don't know us and we don't know them, especially at such a personal level in which we don't know what happens behind closed doors. So realistically speaking, how can we really say who's good or who's bad when we only see these people on our TV screens? or until they're eventually exposed in the media, then we can make some judgment, as shown in the trial. Whether you believe Johnny Depp or Amber Heard, you can't deny that both parties are very toxic. We'll just have to wait and see what the aftermath of the verdict will look like.